next guest is a writer, essayist, feminist, blogger, pseudo-journalist, and taker of naps from right here in Chicago. Her work has appeared in outlets like the New York Times, Rolling Stone, The Guardian, Slate, Bitch Magazine, and The Daily Beast, among others. She's written about topics ranging from LGBT issues to pop culture to sports, and she spends way too much time on Twitter, like none of the rest of us, I'm sure. Um, she recently began working full-time at Upworthy as a trends contributor, and hopes to stick around there for the foreseeable future. Give a warm welcome to Parker Malloy. And as I, I mean, I, I spent all day writing about other people, so I decided yesterday actually to sit down and try to write something about myself. Um, however, whenever I put a personal essay online, it ends up being destroyed in the comment section, so you know, I'm just gonna say it out loud. So here we go. Um, this is something I wrote uh, yesterday. On a Friday afternoon in March 2014, I found myself sitting in a plastic surgeon's office. I feel the need to specify plastic surgeon because while most medical facilities are bland, boring, and sterile in aesthetic, there's a certain tackiness that only presents itself in two places on earth, a plastic surgeon's office and the inside of a used car dealership. Threadbare couches, gold-plated fixtures, and cheap indoor f in a cheap indoor fountain straight from a Sky Mall catalog, I was in it for an experience like no other. I'd often wondered what a plastic surgeon would try to sell me on, should I give him the chance. I should have known the answer. Everything. <laughs> from my forehead to my hips, I was about to be told what makes me a disgusting, repulsive creature, in only a slightly more subtle manner. See, as you may or may not know, I'm transgender. That is, I was assigned male at birth, I went through a very unfortunate testosterone-dominated puberty, but I'm actually a woman. So, coming to terms with who I am and feeling self-sufficient enough to be on my own uh, in the event that everyone in my life fell apart, I began letting people, you know, know that, hey, so here's the thing, I'm actually a woman, you know, what and whatnot. Um, this also included, included letting all my former partners know that, surprise, they're now retroactively bisexual. <laughs> so, you're welcome. Um, it was around this time I started hormone replacement therapy, which is to say it started taking shots and pills that would deplete my testosterone while raising the amount of estrogen in my body. Anyway, I digress. I explained to my surgeon that while I'd been on hormone replacement therapy for roughly a year and a half, I was fed up with a number of features, namely my face, my whole face. I can alter my body chemistry all I want, but nothing short of a surgeon's knife can help me achieve the goal of no longer seeing the man that the world thought me to be when I looked in the mirror. It wasn't that my face was particularly ugly, misshapen, or anything of the sort. Rather, it was just my face, and that made it something I needed to get rid of. So, as someone whose only other encounters with anything even remotely surgical was being in twilight sleep for the removal of my wisdom teeth in, in an upper endoscopy a few years prior, I cringed at the thought of going through with any sort of procedure I'd researched. Dr. Z, as he likes to be called, rattled off a list of expensive procedures, each one more foreign than the last. Let's do it. All of it, I told him. When people ask me what all of it means, I could go through a list of unpronounceable terms, or I could just say, ever see the movie Face Off? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> so, almost six months to the day later, I made my way to the waiting room, this time with my fiance, Kayla, by my side. After several hours of surgery and a bit of time chilling in the recovery room, I was wheeled into a car by a nurse that would be taking care of me for the next few days. As she drove me home in my slightly, in my still lightly anesthetized state, uh, why did I write a word that long that I couldn't pronounce? <laughs> I was still out of it. Let's go with that. I felt good. Sure, my face had just, had just literally 
Sure, they just literally peeled off my face, my sanded my skull bones down, and sewed my face back on, but hey, drugs. <laughs> I love this song, I told the nurse as she drove me home. The radio, the radio was playing an Iggy Azalea song, which must have been another side effect of the drugs. Really, really poor taste in music. So, the first few days after that were a bit of a blur. I did have a few fears, however, that kept popping back up. For example, I was really afraid that my face was going to fall off. I calmed myself, though, knowing that, that Kayla was good with a needle and thread, so how much harder would it be <laughs> to put a face back on need be? Um, you know, perhaps it wasn't the most logical thing to go through my head, but I was still getting used to things. Over the next few weeks and months, I began to, s to settle into a routine, get used to seeing a massively altered version of myself in the mirror, and as my face healed, I got back to work. When I walked into my day job, I kind of assumed that someone would say something. After all, I'd been gone for six weeks, and a lot of my coworkers were the types to catch on if someone got a new haircut, let alone had their face completely overhauled. <laughs> they didn't, though. Um, but what was more amazing were my encounters with people that I knew prior to coming out as trans. For example, one morning I was riding the train when some burly dude sat next to me. As men have a tendency to do, he did that man-spreading thing where he opened his legs at roughly a 70-degree angle. I exhaled loudly, and he looked at me. I froze. I realized this was my former boss from about three years ago. <laughs> I expected him to show some sign of recognition, but he just went right back to sitting like a complete and total asshole, which was pretty much in line with his character. So, uh, and then, uh, the same thing happened just recently at the gym. As I was finishing up some time on the treadmill, I saw an old acquaintance. Um, waiting for a class to start. On my way out, I decided to say hi. I waved. Hey! All I got back was a look of conf confusion and response. It was at that very moment that I realized that I hadn't actually spoken to this person since I came out as trans. Hoping to avoid further embarrassment, I darted out the door before I could be sucked into a really awkward conversation that I've had several dozen times. It's not fun. Um, so yeah, so now, you know, I know I don't look like a model. Most people wouldn't look at me and think, yeah, I'd pay $25,000 for that. But for me, it's been worth every penny. See, it's not about looking hot, sexy, or conventionally attractive. It's just about feeling right about myself and who I am. I have that now. As a result, I feel healthier, I feel happier, I'm less worried. I'm allowed to focus on my work, and I'm allowed, and it's allowed me to enjoy my life. And that's why I sort of cringe when I hear people say things like, why can't you just be happy with yourself the way you are? As though we're not all tweaking our appearances in various ways. Whether by how we dress, how we wear our hair, makeup, fitness, or what have you. You know, how is my face any less legitimate than any of that? I'm buried in debt be because of it, but to me it's worth it. This is me, and this is who I am. So hey, I'm done. <laughs>